particularly the work up front, I see a big problem when I work with, with companies. I see them really struggling with sort of matching up, I'll call it what they say they want with the money that they're willing to pay. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, then you end up getting probably the not ideal candidate um, you know, who technically has the credentials but maybe doesn't have the talent level. So I think, uh, I think companies, if they spend a little bit more time, that would really speed up the process. I know we talked a little bit about that. Really understanding what they want. Yeah. Yeah. So much of what we heard earlier today was, you know, about being prepared, you know, and, and being agile at the same time. You know, I think of it in terms of you're not going to show up to a VC presentation and not be prepared. Think of it when a candidate shows up for to interview with your company. You have to have reviewed their resume. Your staff has to know the person is coming in. You know, there's nothing worse than leaving a candidate standing there and they're going, oh, I, I think I'm meeting. You're making an impression right out of the gate. Yeah, I just made okay. one there, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's really, really critical. Um, could we shift gears to motivating? Um, we all work with some great companies that are really good at motivating people. Um, maybe let's talk a couple of minutes about either a culture or particular managers and how they really motivate teams, whether it's early stage or whether it's a little bit later stage company-wise. Yeah, Again, I, I sound a little like a broken record. We, we are uh, followers of behavioral, basically behavioral attributes as it relates to, to building organizations, not on functional skill sets. And the same thing goes with how you motivate an individual. The, the one individual that's motivated by money, you, you gotta motivate them with a leverage compensation plan because that's what gets them up every day and gets them excited about doing their job. There are lots of individuals out there that don't really care about money. There are people that need to be communicated with every day. You're doing a great job. They want recognition. They want that spot at the front of the parking lot or they want the, the office with a, a window out to the world. Um, so you really have to take the time to get to know the people in your organization and know what their buttons are and not to make the assumption that across the board everyone is going to be motivated by employee of the month, everyone's going to be uh, motivated by the best benefits plan. It's, it's funny, we all have different DNA, we all have different hair color and, and different skin, we all have different behavioral motiva motivations and yet if you're a great team leader and a great entrepreneur you take the time, whether it be with a tool that you know, many of us use, it's a, a documented statistically based tool, or you just sit with your employees and get to know them and understand what motivates them. And you need to invest in your people, invest in technology, and uh, mentor your people, and um, encourage them to, you know, whether it's additional education, you know, just to keep them um, feeling like they're, va they're valuable in the organization. The one word we keep using is time, and if you spend as much time on your employees and your staff as you do on your bottom line, as you do on your product development, um, you know, that's the biggest, you know, you, know, you guys owe everybody, uh, a lot of companies. If, if you don't take the time to appreciate your staff and be attuned to what's going on, uh, you will lose them. Yeah. See, I think um, probably some of the greatest leaders I've been around, what they were really good at, and what I'm talking about really good at in terms of motivating people, is they made people feel like they were on a winning team. Winning They're gonna be on a winning team. Yeah, There's very clear relative to the direction of, of the company. Um, they really understood their role, but more importantly, they could sort of see the passion and they could see the commitment of the leader, that that person was present, that they were there, uh, and that they were really interested in the business and, and also interested in them. And I think that those are critical motivators for people. We talked about the stand-up meetings. You know, if you haven't, you know, every now and then you need to communicate from, the, you know, the president, CEO, on down to the lowest level employee you have where we're going. And, and get them to buy in and have that passion that you have. And if you do it in a 10 minute stand up meeting every day, once a week, you know, include them, make them feel a part of it. Your people can tell if you're passionate about the business. They can, they'll be the first ones to know. So um, you're really just fooling yourself if you're really not passionate about it. Okay, um, how about we move on to the, the last question. I think we've got a couple of minutes here. Um, let's talk about culture. Um, we all work with great companies um, that have great cultures, so not just the leader themselves, but the culture. Um, any thoughts that you can share with the group about what makes up a great culture or things that you've seen that are really, uh, you know, really motivational, energizing, and really foster growth within an organization? I mean, for us, I, I think the, the number one thing, and it's such an easy one, is trust. You know, if there's trust in an organization, and it, we've all danced with that conversation up here this, this afternoon, but if there's true trust, you know, we, in our firm, we do open book accounting. 
Um, everybody kind of knows, you know, not necessarily to the dime, but has a pretty good sense of how we spend our money and, and what's important in the organization. I think, you know, there are other things. There's delegation, there's communication, there's, there's uh, investment in, in uh, professional development. There's a lot of peripheral things. But if you could do one thing as a CEO, if, if you could be consistent with your message and consistent with really just being a trustful, um, ethical, honest leader, I think that goes a long way. And sharing values, uh, you know, same, they have the same mission, goal for the organization, um, and teamwork, I think is good. You know, one of the things you talked about in terms of culture is realize that not everybody's going to like your culture. So um, your culture is your organization, and that's okay. And, you know, if your team does beers at 5 o'clock every Friday afternoon, and that's who your group wants to be, then, and you, you know, know who you're recruiting and convey that. And if the guy says, you know, that's, that's really not my gig, then probably that's not the right employee for you. And be aware of that. And don't go, well, but he's a great CFO or he's a great, you know, technologist and I really want him on my team. Because long term, the culture's not a fit. And if the culture's not a fit, it doesn't matter. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. Just a quick one. It's a rapid fire one. So is it harder to get people to come to the Capital Region now um, for jobs easier or no difference in the last 10 years? I mean, you know, we live here and we work here, so it's for us, uh, for in our organization, it's actually very easy. You know, there's nothing like talking on the phone with someone. We, we clearly try to attract candidates from mid-market cities. I heard a lot this morning about, you know, it's still hard to recruit. Well, it's going to be tough to get somebody to come from, you know, Tampa, Florida or, or uh, the West Coast to come here. But uh, the reality is if you're practical in your approach, and there are lots of pockets of technology in the U.S. that are similar to what's going on here, um, if you're, if you're a, a was it that bad of an answer? No, I'm listening. I gotta <laughs> give. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be subtle there. <laughs> you don't know how to yeah, be subtle. Yeah, guess what, right? <laughs> Isn't that why you got the job? <laughs> <laughs> um, so going after mid-market cities, you know, Cleveland, Princeton, New Jersey, Springfield, Syracuse, um, you know, down the mid-Atlantic states. You know, that, that's where we would tar You know, obviously you have to go where the technology is, but we would try to stay with equivalent cultures. Yeah, when we head oh, yeah. out of out of state, we promote you know Saratoga, Albany, the whole you know I want to say count counties. What's going on? And we share with them. Like I had a young lady um, that I I got her excited because I was, she was into horses, so I was telling her about Saratoga, and it was it was exciting because she's been talking about it. And I'm glad we got her here. And, you know, so cool. nice. Yeah. All right. John? That sounds great. No, I'd just say as a CEO, I, I think it's a lot easier. There's a lot of a lot of great things going on. I think it's an easier story for me to tell and try to attract people to the region. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it so much right. letting me join you. Thank you.